nothing unexpected happened. Hi everyone, hope you are doing good. Your boy Al is here with Kaiju number 8 episode 12 review so let's roar into it. At first we see Reno and Iharu are at their base's gym. Reno tells Iharu he wants to get stronger to protect Kafka, confident that Kafka will return, which motivates Iharu to train harder. The platoon leaders then arrive and inform Iharu and Reno that the higher-ups will determine Kafka's fate today. They also report that Mina was summoned to the Ariaki Maritime base and may return with good news. Mina arrives in a conference room and is told that Aisao is examining Kafka elsewhere. She is instructed to remain in the conference room until Aisao finishes, reminded she is there only as an observer. Meanwhile, the fight between Kafka and Aisao continues. Kafka tries to calm Kaiju number 8, who has control of his body, and performs new feats to hold his own against Aisao, who is using weapons made from Kaiju number 2. Keiji tells Kakoru that Aisao could have easily killed Kafka during their initial meeting but chose not to because he wanted to test both Kafka and Kaiju number 8. I didn't like how Mina got treated here, because it wouldn't be her fault even if Kafka were to be a Kaiju, so it just shows that the higher-ups of the defense force are just dumb and arrogant. Also I was right, Aisao just wanted to test Kafka for Kakoru's sake. We see Aoi and Haruchi continue talking on the rooftop. Aoi shares that he joined the defense force to save lives and didn't expect Kafka to save his. Haruchi is hesitant to view Kafka the same way. Aoi advises Haruchi to judge people by their actions. Haruchi looks at his phone, sees his father's number, and agrees with Aoi. Meanwhile, Kafka and Aisao's fight continues, and Kafka severely injures Aisao. Keiji notes that Kaiju number 8's fortitude level is slowly increasing. Kafka worries he may kill Aisao in front of Kikoru. As Kaiju number 8 continues to beat Aisao, Kikoru reflects on her promise to kill Kafka if he harms humanity. She calls out to Kafka, begging him to fight Kaiju number 8's control. Kaiju number 8 appears in front of Kafka and swallows him. Inside Kaiju number 8's stomach, Kafka sees a mirage of Mina, who tells him she'll always be waiting for him. Encouraged, Kafka regains control over his body just before Kaiju number 8 murders Aisao. Kafka strikes himself and tells Aisao he is Kafka Habino, not Kaiju number 8. Yay! The power of promise saved Kafka. Jokes aside, I gotta say, I didn't like the way they handled the scene, because it was too typical, but I guess it is what it is. Also Haruchi acting strange might be a setup for the next season. Next we see Kafka fall to the ground. Before Narumi can kill Kafka, Aisao stops him and calls for medics to take Kaiju number 8's remnants, noting that its core is mildly damaged without elaborating on Kafka's fate. In the base's conference room, Aisao, Keiji, and Mina meet. Mina confirms she knew Kafka long before he joined the defense force but promises she didn't give him special treatment. The higher-ups inform Mina they've made their decision, stating their testimony won't change Kaiju number 8's fate. Mina wants specialists to determine if Kafka is human or Kaiju. She shares her experience with Kafka, detailing his achievements and failures during the Kaiju number 9 and 10 fights. She argues Kafka's determination and motive to save people make him a valuable officer. Mina recalls a past moment with Kafka and asserts he has a huge heart. Some higher-ups remain unconvinced, but Aisao thanks Mina and asks her to return to her post. Mina's speech was nice, but heavily emotion-driven, but then again there's no logical way to prove Kafka is a human, so I can understand why she did that. Also it was obvious that Aisao had backups waiting for him. Moving on we see that before Aisao reveals Kaiju number 8's fate, we see Kafka floating in a water-like tube, reflecting on his mission to make Kaijus pay for causing Mina pain and his preference to die as a human rather than turn into a Kaiju. Kafka wakes up in a hospital bed with Aisao sitting next to him. Aisao reassures Kafka that he doesn't plan to hurt him. Kafka is relieved that Aisao is alive and asks if he will be reinstated as a defense force officer. Aisao explains that the council still considers him a kaiju, but they will decide later if he is a threat. 
Aisao reveals he convinced the council to allow Kopka to fight as Kaiju number 8. We cut to Aisao's meeting with the council, where he argues that controlling Kopka could be more useful than creating a weapon from him, presenting credible evidence to support his case. Like I said in a previous review, they are going to keep Kafka alive, and use him until he goes berserk or something like that. Also I wonder whether Kafka has a family or not, because he only cares about Mina. Then we see that in the present, Aisao asks Kafka to prove his worth to ensure his survival. Kafka is unhappy that the council views him as a weapon and vows to convince Aisao and the others that he is a defense force officer like them. Meanwhile, Mina smiles at her phone and leaves the Ariaki Maritime base. Kikoru, in an undisclosed room, receives a text from Mina informing her that Kafka will be okay. Kikoru vows to get stronger in case Kafka loses control again. Aoi, Iharu, Reno, and the others receive the same text about Kafka. Reno reminds Iharu that he knew Kafka would pull through. Hashina and Okanaji discuss the new intel about Kafka with Hashina arguing they need to keep Kafka's kaiju essence under wraps to prevent outside forces from discovering their secret. While Kafka naps, we cut away to the Monster Sweeper Incorporated building. I think Hashina's point about keeping Kafka's powers a secret is really important, because if other countries find out there's someone who can wield such powers then they will try anything to capture him. Also it looks like Kikoru has fallen for Kafka. At the end we see a few workers are upset because someone named number 9 keeps defeating them at chess. We then see Kaiju number 9 reflecting on his victories over the humans at chess. He says he's close to reaching humanity's intellectual level and has discovered the details surrounding the Defense Force's main base. Kaiju number 9 wants to move forward with the next phase of his and his allies' plan, aiming to retrieve Kaiju number 8 from the humans, claiming that this Kaiju belongs to them. So yeah, the season ended, and I'm pretty damn happy to say that we know next to nothing about the lore of this world. Also Kaiju number 9 wanting to take back Kaiju number 8 was an obvious setup for the next season. Nonetheless, I understand many people love this show, but for me it was just a decent watch at best, and we will see if the next season can change my mind. Anyways thanks for watching everyone. If you like my video then check out some of my other videos. Also don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to my channel or leave a comment if you want to say something, you can also follow me on Twitter and Instagram or check out my Facebook page, links are given in the description until then see ya.